In this video, we're going to discuss what branches are and how they relate to your design process. We'll start by first looking back at how things are done when you don't have abstract. So here's this workflow that you might be familiar with, which we discussed in the beginning of the course. Most design teams use some kind of shared file drive to keep the design files in one place so that everyone can have access to the files. However, when multiple designers are working together on the same product or project, teams have to come up with ways to avoid overwriting each other's work. Some teams create timetables so that only one person can open a file at a time. For most teams, designers simply create copies of the original file so that they aren't changing the original, and then they save the copy with a new name after making some amount of changes, and they might save several different copies if they decide to go in different directions. That's how you end up with file names like Antonio Copy 3 Final Version 2, and comments such as not on brand, don't know why, or everything needs to be updated. Now let's take a look at the process in abstract, which is less chaotic and more predictable. Everyone starts with the master files because every project always has a master or made branch. As a reminder, the master is a set of files that are approved or finalized versions of the designs. They are no longer works in progress. In abstract, these master files are protected. Unlike a shared file drive in any other system, no one can just open up the files and start making changes. This is a good thing because it gives your team confidence that the files in master have designs that are supposed to be there. But you've got work to do, so how do you get started working on your designs if the master can't be edited? Well, when you want to start working on new ideas or updates to the designs you see in master, you'll create a new branch. You can think of a branch as basically an exact replica of all the files in the master tab at the point that you clicked the new branch button. This is true for everyone on your team. When someone goes to master and creates a new branch, they'll get their own copy of all the files in master. Once you've got a branch started, you're ready to get to work. You'll need to open your files from abstract by clicking the edit in sketch button and then you can go ahead and work on your designs just like you normally have in the past. However, there are a few convenient processes that Abstract adds to your workflow by using branches. By opening files from your branch, Abstract is able to keep track of the changes that you make along the way using commits. If master is approved or finalized work, then a branch is design work in progress. As the files on your branch evolve, they'll start to deviate from what the master files look like but you don't need to keep renaming and saving different copies of the file. And since Abstract is tracking those changes, you don't have to worry about what is different. When it's time to merge your branch, you'll be able to bring only the things you changed into the master. All branches are tracked this way, which makes it much more transparent to see who changed what and how those changes relate to each other when you're working with lots of designers. So to summarize, a branch is a safe space for you to work on a copy of the design files. Each new branch starts as a replica of its parent branch, which is usually the master. Branches stay open while you work on the design files, and Abstract tracks the changes in your files when you make commits. Finally, when you have finalized or gotten approval on the work you've done in your branch, you can close out that work by merging the changes back into the master files. Next up, we'll dive a little deeper into when and how to create branches.